Now, what would happen if you guys had one of these transformers hooked up in reverse? Guys, this is a revised video of a spotter tool that I made a while back. And I gotta tell you, it's a best tool there is for doing metal work. And in this video, we'll be doing a ground up build of one of these, and I'll be very thorough. And I also promise that if you guys watch this video to the end, you'll be able to build yourself one, even if you're not very mechanically inclined. So let's go. First, we'll need a transformer. And the ones out of microwaves work the best. And I happened to see a microwave in a ditch that someone discarded on the side of the road a couple of days ago. So let's run out and get it. There it is. Let's grab it. This is what we're after. So there are three things that we're gonna need out of this microwave. Transformer, a power wire, and also there are three switches in here. We're just gonna use one of them. Transformers consist of an iron core, which is a metal housing, and two coils. One of your coils is a primary coil, the other one is a secondary. The way to tell which one is which, primary coil will always have two leads. That's how it gets its power from the wall. And primary coil will usually have thicker wire than your secondary coil. And if we look in the back, secondary coil will always have three leads. In this case, it's two wires and one lead. And on this transformer, it just has three wires coming out of its secondary. So to build a transformer for our spotter, we will need three microwave transformers. We will go ahead and get the secondary coils out of them and we'll get them replaced with this thick cable that will become our new secondary coil. So the easiest way to go about this would be to use a hacksaw to cut out the secondary coil. There are a couple of spacer shims that used to separate the lower and upper coils. We're not going to need them anymore, so we're going to knock them out with the rest of the secondary coil. The cable size that I found to be the best for this application is the 2 aught, and all it is is just a welding cable, 600 volt. So if you guys are wondering what the actual width of this cable is, it is 15 millimeters or almost 0.6 of an inch. Length of a cable I used for this project was about 25 feet. Now let's go ahead and make our new secondary coil winding. I will use this other cord which is about the same width as the original. To make our winding, we just pass the cable through, not the other end, and we're going to do that one more time. You want the cable entering and exiting the transformer on the same side. See right here we just have a coil and here we got our in and out. When you have your second and third transformer sitting next to the first one, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna feed the cable in and out. So you're gonna go in, out, in, out, and same thing into the next. I went ahead and screwed all of the three transformers to a piece of plywood so this way everything stays together nice and solid. 
you may be wondering why you would need three transformers instead of one or maybe two max. Well, and the reason is you get a lot more current out of three transformers versus one or even two. When I first made this setup right here, I experimented first with one and then two. And what happened was it kind of sort of works with one or two transformers, but you do want to have a more powerful setup. And let me explain why. Let's say you're working on a dent and you're trying to raise metal that's been pushed down. So the way it works is you're essentially welding a tip of your puller to the metal inside of your dent and you're trying to raise that metal. You're trying to bring it back to where it's supposed to be. And if you're using just one transformer, the bond between the tip of your puller and the metal inside of your dent will break before the metal will even move because one transformer doesn't make enough power to make a really good fusion between the tip and the metal. So then you start using two transformers and as you weld the tip onto the metal, you start making your pull and the metal starts moving. But the thing is, it doesn't come out all the way before you break the bond between the tip and the metal. Because with three, this tip will really be able to bite into that metal and pull it all out. So just recently, I've seen some Chinese spotters coming online and they're starting to become available for sale here in the US. But after I've done some research into them, you know, I've done some reading on various forums and also I read some reviews in some of the online stores. The conclusion I came to is those things are crap because a lot of people say, hey, you know, I got this thing, started using it and it just burnt up on me and now it's completely dead and unusable. But other people will say that these things are underpowered. So I would say they are probably put out as much power as one and a half of transformers or maybe two transformers max. That's why a homemade spotter is so much better because if your homemade spotter breaks, the construction is so simple, you can easily figure out what's wrong with it and fix it so you can start using it again. And if you got a Chinese spotter that breaks, I wouldn't even know where to begin, start looking for what the root of the problem may be. Now let's go ahead and power up our transformers and also let's measure out the voltage output. So this is a power cable that I salvaged out of one of the microwaves and that's what I'm going to use. First thing I'll do is I'm going to power up just one of the transformers. And always, always make sure that whenever you're working with the power delivery to transformers, that your power plug is unplugged because otherwise you will surely get electrocuted. All right, let's get this plugged in and you'll hear the transformer humming right after it gets powered up. Now I'm going to set my multimeter to AC volts. Well, let's test the output voltage that's coming out of these leads out of our transformers. And with just one transformer running, we get 2.22 volts. Let's go ahead and write that down because that's the power we're just getting out of this one transformer. Now let's go ahead and test the output of the other two transformers. The main reason I tested these transformers out one by one was to make sure that the voltage output reading was about the same between all of them. Because if it wasn't, let's say two of the transformers are at 2.2 volts and then the third transformer is at like half a volt quarter of a volt or even less that would indicate that that transformer has a problem and now that could mean there's one of two things could be wrong with it one of the things is the primary coil could have gotten damaged during the extraction of the original secondary coil and if there is a tear in the shielding of the cable and that copper wire that's inside of the cable is making contact with the metal housing of a transformer it's pretty much shorting itself out 2.17 okay they are all very very close this brings me to the next test so let's go ahead and connect two of these transformers together to do that I'm gonna use the right lead from one transformer and I'll connect it to the right lead of the other transformer and then I'll connect power to it And same thing, the left lead to left lead. So if everything connected properly, we should have the voltage of 2.2 plus 2.22, which would come out to about 4.4 volts. Right there. Now, what would happen if you guys had one of these transformers hooked up in reverse? So I just swapped these two leads 
So now the right lead here actually runs to the left lead of the other transformer. And then the right lead of this transformer would go to the left lead of this one. Let's test the output. What do we have? You see this point right here? It means that everything under this point is less than one volt. So we got 0 0.09 of a volt. That means that since one of these transformers was connected in reverse, both of these transformers canceled each other out. So that means if you have three transformers hooked up together, but only one of them is hooked up in reverse, you will only get the power output of one transformer out of all three. That's why it's good to connect these transformers to the power one by one, just like here. I hooked up this one first, then hooked it up to the second transformer, made sure that I had double the voltage output, and then I connected these two transformers to a third one, and I watched what happened. So if my total output is about 6.6 .6 volts, then I know that all three of my transformers are hooked up correctly. Well, this timer relay could be adjusted to have its pulse duration to be anywhere from 0.1 of a second to about 10 seconds. So I will go ahead and turn this thing down to be about, let's say roughly half of a second. You got your positive and negative connections in the front. And this little knob right here, that's what allows you to select your timing. And what I'm using for power supply is just a regular little power adapter Look at the output level. It says right here, it's eight volts and 500 milliamps, so it's half an amp. You can use any power adapter with the output of between eight and 12 volts to power this timer relay. So let's go ahead and get this thing powered up. And for demonstration purposes, I will use a wire with a light bulb in it. So this way we can see the length of our pulse. Now look at the back side, we have three connections, CK, COW, and a CB. We will not be using a CB connection. Now let's go ahead and run power to this timer. Look, nothing happens. That means I have to reverse my power cables. Did you see that? Every time the power is supplied, I get a pulse, which is maybe about half a second long or so. Now let's go ahead and run power to it through this switch right here. So I'm going to loosen my positive terminal and connect it to a positive wire that comes out of my power supply and the other wire will get connected to the negative terminal. So now every time I push the button and hold it down I have a pulse for about half of a second. So if you're confused I got the positive wire from the power block running into my positive terminal. And then my negative wire runs to the terminal, but it goes through the button switch. So if this button is not pressed, there's no negative being connected to a negative terminal. And once the button is pressed, we get our pulls. This brings us to the next step. This is a solid state relay. And the way it works is, whenever it gets power to these two terminals, if you look right here, it says 3 to 32 volts, and that's DC power, meaning low voltage that's going to be coming out of our timer. So when these two terminals get power, they will lock a little bridge in here that would in turn will lock another bridge up front, and the secondary bridge will connect these two terminals. Now let's go ahead and delete this light bulb out of this circuit. So let's go ahead and attach these two wires to these two terminals. Now let's connect this to our transformers. So I'm going to disconnect one of the power wires that runs from our power plug to the transformers. So we're going to introduce two more wires into this equation. So the first wire will get connected to the power wire. 
and the other end of it will get connected to one of the terminals on a relay. And then this wire will get connected to the wires that power up the transformers. And this end will go to the other terminal on a relay. Okay, now we can plug the power in. As you can tell, transformers are not humming because the power to transformers is being routed through this relay and the bridge right here is open because this bridge in turn is open because the timer relay has not activated the bridge right here to close this bridge because I have not pushed this button yet. So let's push the button and nothing happened. And I bet I know why, because DC part of the relay is polarity sensitive. So I bet you I have these wires running in backwards, so I have to switch them around. Let's try this again. Did you guys hear that? Now the transformers get activated for roughly half a second as everything runs through the switch. So this puller actually has two functions. One of them is to pull the metal out and another function is whenever metal gets stretched out and it starts oil canning where it pops back and forth, the way to stop that is to shrink the metal. And I would normally shrink it with the shrinking tip that slides over my puller like this. But in order for the shrinker to work, I cannot get away with a half second pulse. The pulse has to be much longer, more like three, maybe four, or maybe even five seconds. Now, I don't wanna go back and have to adjust this little knob every time I go between the puller option and the shrinking option. So instead, I'm gonna wire in a little toggle switch. Now, this toggle switch has three contacts. And if you look in the front, it's got on and on position. So if I go down, it's an on, if I go all the way up, it's an on, but in the center is where it's off. So let's go ahead and add a couple more wires to this setup. I got this one wire that I'll go ahead and connect to one of the leads on the switch. So now the wire that came out of the center port is actually gonna go right here on the switch. And this end is gonna go back into the center port. So let's plug the transformers back in. Okay, no hum. That's because this pull is in a center position, which is an off position. So whenever you try to activate this side, you actually have to move the toggle switch to the opposite side. Yep, I can hear the transformers now. I will go ahead and connect another wire to a negative port and run it into our empty port on the toggle switch. Okay, so what did we achieve by doing that? Let's go ahead and power up the transformers. So right now with our toggle switch facing this way, we're activating the timed part of our circuit. I got a plane flying overhead, so I hope you guys can hear the transformers hum. So I get my half second pulse because everything is running through a relay. Now let's go ahead and throw this toggle switch over to the other side. What did we gain by that? Now the transformers get power for as long as I hold the button and then they even stay on for another second or so after that. I went ahead and tidied up all of the wiring on the back of the transformers. I had to shorten some of the wires, had to lengthen others, just basically wanted to get everything to about the same length and also use some zip ties to kind of get everything nice and tight and secured. It looks like I have some room right in this area, so I think that's where I will go ahead and place the toggle switch, right in there.
Now I have a hole right here and this component is gonna go into it. Basically what this is, it's a fuse or it could also be called a circuit breaker. It's basically the same thing that you have in your circuit panel in your house. So the way it works is if the circuit gets overloaded, this button will pop. And in order for us to reset it, I just have to push the button back in. And right away, one of our power wires that comes from our power plug will go right in one of the terminals. Now let's get the rest of these components situated in this area. I'm going to attach these components to this piece of wood. Reason for that is there are exposed electrical connections in the back of the timer switch and I don't want them shorting out on the metal. That's why wood is a good medium for this sort of stuff. I went ahead and ran an extension wire for our button switch the entire duration of one of my leads. The power adapter fits really nice and snug in between the wall of the enclosure and this piece of wood. I mean, it's so tight I can't even move it. Now let's go ahead and run power to it. Okay, all of the wiring is hooked up. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and get this thing powered up. Oh yeah. So the next step is let's go ahead and get this button switch permanently attached to that lead. I'm going to use this wire sleeving that will keep everything nice and tight and organized. I will go ahead and feed some of the sleeving in through this cable clamp and then I'll clamp everything down. I will use this really thick shrink wrapping to hold this button in place. So after fighting this shrink wrap for a while, I was able to get it stretched over the button. Then I got the button wires connected to our longer wires that run all the way to the spotter. All right, finished product. And the last thing I'm going to modify with the setup is the ground. This is a magnetic ground. I've used this thing for a while and to sum this up, this thing basically sucks. Let me tell you why. First of all, you see there's a lot of dirt that sticks to it and it's pretty hard to get it all cleaned off. So when the magnet's all dirty and you stick it onto the panel, a lot of times it doesn't get very good adhesion because it's all dirtied up with all that debris. Now if you look at the grounding puck, you'll see a lot of small black dots. Now those dots represent the actual spot where it actually makes ground. And that sucks because you actually want a larger area being your ground versus just few little spots here and there. So to sum this up, this grounding puck doesn't really make very good contact with the panel, thus resulting in pretty poor ground connection. So I decided to build a good ground from scratch instead of this junky thing. These are the parts that we will need for our new ground. It's just a steel bolt, a couple of steel nuts, a steel washer that has a thread in it, and then a couple of brass plumbing fittings. This used to be just a brass plug then I went ahead and cut in half, so I ended up with this ring that had a thread on the outside. And this ring threads right into this fitting in here. And it fits in there nice and flush. 
so now I'm going to attempt to sharpen this bolt to a point kind of sort of like this. That worked. It doesn't have to be as sharp as this point here. Just this is good enough. Nice and tight. And this is it. Really nice and simple. Okay, let's go ahead and test everything out. So first of all, I'll go ahead and uh, make a big dent in the panel. So in order to attach the ground to the panel, we just have to touch the tips of both the puller and the ground tip to the panel and zap it. All right, this thing is on there. Nice and secure. All right, let's raise that dent. But yeah, in a nutshell, I just raised all of that metal. And let me quickly demonstrate how the uh, shrinker tip works. Yeah, the metal gets pretty nice and hot. This ground is super simple. It is very effective and it's really easy to make. And this thing really stays on there. And in order to take it off, I just have to loosen up the nut and twist the cable and it comes right off. I showed you how to build and put together the internals of the spotter. But one thing I didn't show you how to build is this puller. And the reason being is I did not build this thing. I actually bought it. I ordered this thing from Russia a while back and I'm not even sure if I can still order this thing, but not to worry. There is a great alternative that could be used in place of this part right here that's been used by many professionals with great results. It is a bit different, but it will get the job done just as well as my pooler. I've been wanting to upgrade this spotter for a while now and I'm really happy with the way everything turned out because finally this thing is what I wanted it to be from the very beginning. It is a lot more user friendly and will be so much easier and faster to use. I hope I was able to answer a lot of questions in this video that you guys had about the inner workings of this potter. I'm no electrician, that's why it took me so long to figure out all of the electronics that are associated with this setup. And if you guys will set out to build yourselves one of these, I'll make it easier for you by leaving the links to the most of the parts that I've used in this build in the description down below. I'm about to start a new project here in just a couple of days where the spotter will be a primary tool to get all of the repairs done, therefore it's going to get a lot of use. So go ahead and stay tuned for that. So what do you guys think? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Is there anything you would have done differently? Is there anything you would have added to this setup to make it even better? Please let me know in the comments down below. And in the meanwhile, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be seeing you soon in the next video.